I dropped freezing. Freezing, I actually have to admit, is a bit of a guilty pleasure of mine. I like the anime, at least the first season. Uh, the first season of the anime, I actually really do like. I like the dub, and I watch it every so often just because it's like, you know, it's like comfort food. It's like, you know, you just gotta, you just gotta watch something to help get the bad taste out of your mouth. The freezing manga, though, goes way, way far beyond the manga. It is 225 chapters. That's all I've read. I don't know if there's more. The problem being is that the mangaka that writes it, apparently he likes to take really long breaks. He likes to start new projects. And I, I mean, I don't blame him. You know, you, you once you start doing something for over 200 chapters, obviously you're going to want to do something else for a little bit. Who knows? Maybe they'll come back and they'll end up finishing it, but I really don't think so. Either way, so you've never been into freezing. I would honestly recommend that you watch the anime instead. And watch it dubbed if you're an English speaker, because it's an alright dub. It uses your standard group of uh, dub actors, but I mean, it's still really good for me at least. Um, but basically, freezing, it's a future world, right? Where there are these girls called Pandoras, who can use these like things called stigmatas which make them have weapons so they can fight an alien from another dimension called novas and basically there's like schools it's like it's your standard school for gifted children that fight you know enemies extraterrestrial beings that kind of stuff so major spoilers major major spoilers i'm talking 225 chapters worth of spoilers coming in from freezing so our first main character is satellizer e l bridget satellizer l bridget it's a big name they call her stella for short or satella something like that it's like stella satella satellizer i'll just call her that for now uh basically she's like this really powerful pandora she's known as the untouchable queen you learn later on that the reason why she doesn't like being touched is because, surprise, surprise, in a manga, she had a mother who was sick. And so her mother, I believe, was like a mistress to this rich man. So they let her stay in her house while she got treatment. Meanwhile, Satellizer was uh, harassed. It's kind of implied that it's sexually, but it's more just kind of like general harassment and being treated like a doll by her stepbrother new brother i don't know what the relationship you would consider it as they're not really through marriage so i don't know if it's a stepbrother just her new brother basically he would like abuse her every night and nobody believes satellizer she would tell her mom and her mom would be like you know just be grateful that we're here her older sister which is the biological sister of her uh, little brother would believe her and would try to protect her but obviously there's only so much she can do she's also just a child so satellizer satellizer it's a really weird name to say basically she grew up where she was like i have to become stronger and i don't need anyone's help i'm by myself and no one can touch me but then enters our male main character kazuya aoi aoi kazuha Either way, Kazuha is like every generic self-insert character. He really likes his sister, but kind of impl- Again, it's Japan, it's manga. He likes his sister a lot to the point where he sees Satellizer as his sister in the beginning. And like he touches her and it's this whole thing of like, she's like, I don't mind that you touch me, but like, it's still weird. You learn later on that Kazuya's sister was like a super strong Pandora who had these like really powerful stigmata pieces and those pieces were recycled and put into other various Pandoras. The males in this series sort of have like pseudo powers. They're called limiters and they partner up with a Pandora and they can use um, a power called freezing. Uh, see, it's a the title. They can use a power called freezing where they can 
hold the Nova in place while the Pandora kills the Nova. So, Kazuya and Satellizer, they are kind of like a unofficial partnership. Like, in this world, when a Pandora and a Limiter are going to partner up, they do this thing called a baptism. And as you can, you know, guess, it is very much just like a heavy implication of the uh, bedroom dance, we'll call it, where the two combine, I guess you could say, Uh, The Pandora inserts a stigmata into the limiter. I believe that's what it was. Either way, the early chapters are very much just like school life. You know, it's like it's like how most uh, battle school manga goes. It's like Satellizer is the second year. The third years don't like her. So all the third years are like, I'm gonna go teach her a lesson. And then Satellizer is like, I don't think so. And then, you know, there's a fight fight happens third years get beat up blah 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 blah. you get it's basically like i'm number five in the school there's no way you can beat me and then she beats her (laughs) like i'm number two in the school there's no way you can beat me and then she beats her uh we later get introduced to this character who's supposed to like add to the love triangle but it never really gets that far because it's very obvious that kazuya likes satellizer even to the point where later in the series they sort of become like a they sort of become like a couple but Rana Lynchin, she's like this um, native mountain girl. And she believes that the stigmata and the Pandoras is like tied to her religion. It's not really like sci fi nest for her. It's more just like this is a blessing from, um, I don't want to say her god, but I guess it is basically her god. But yeah, that happens. Eventually, the school gets invaded. It's a mini invasion arc, fights happen, and then we cut to, it turns out that there's like a very low rate of Pandoras, and there's like a monopoly on Pandoras or something. So there's this lady who's like, I'll make these like pseudo Pandoras, I believe they're called like E-Pandoras, where they're like man-made Pandoras, because it's like really, really hard for a girl to have the, uh, what do you call it? aptitude aptitude yeah the aptitude to become a pandora so she's like if i can do it through science then we can have e pandoras and e pandoras they get some character there's really three that we focus on here but at the end of the arc uh it's revealed that like there's this really powerful uh pandora called chief on she ends up sacrificing herself so then the like e pandoras because they go crazy like the e- you you start learning that like the pandoras are basically like nova and when they go into this mode called pandora mode they basically become novas and so the e pandoras it was like the the formula wasn't correct or something and the e pandoras end up becoming novas and you start learning more and more after this that there's some like tomfoolery in the background because Kazuya's grandfather is like the like creator or like one of the like lead scientists who knows a lot about like Novas and Pandoras and you learn later on this is like way way later on but you learn later on that Kazuya is actually like 90% Nova like his tissue is like full-on Nova and it turns out that his grandfather like did this whole thing with his mother and his dad where like he somehow like manipulated Kazuya's DNA you learn that Kazuya's mother isn't even really his mother there's these other Pandoras that are like the founding Pandoras like the strongest Pandoras and one of them is actually Kazuya's mother and she has like a huge attachment to him and she's like really overprotective of him and you learn that Chifon was actually one of those pandoras it's a lot like this manga suffers from the thing of like it throws a lot of exposition at you then there's like a lot of fighting and then there's a lot of exposition again and it's like the problem is too is that the enemies it's always just like a new group it's very shonen where it's like here's this new group oh it turns out this group was working for this group oh by the way this group wasn't the top 
is actually someone above them. And then it's like, there's someone above them. And then it all culminates, right, into Kazuya being teleported to another dimension where he learns that the Nova are actually from this other dimension that is like a inverse of his current dimension. Like, there's a girl who looks like Satellizer, but her name isn't Satellizer. There's a girl that looks like Rana, but her name isn't Rana. There's a girl that looks like basically all the other side characters. Like, all the, there's a lot. I'm going to tell you this right now. There's saying a lot of side characters, and it gets very confusing to follow all their plot lines because it it's a very big mismatch and it's just kind of like it, it, it you need to focus this the story really needs focus but either way he gets teleported to another world he learns that the nova are actually like the pandora's being teleported to an to his universe because in the other universe once a pandora like goes full nova they just teleport it somewhere else and it turns out that it's going to his dimension it's something like that it's really like it's really just confusing and at that point i was kind of done i was kind of like this is not what i really wanted and that's 225 chapters and i caught up to the series i don't know if there's more chapters from what i've understood it's been on hiatus for quite a while like maybe over a few years <laughs> i don't really know uh i do know that apparently the manga is actually very very hard to find physically because it's two in ones it's done by seven c's and as you could imagine it's out of print so a lot of people sell volumes for just outrageous prices absolutely outrageous prices but i would rather you watch the anime. The first season is pretty, like, your, your standard fare. I just like it for some reason. I'll be honest, I really don't know why. I just like it. The second season is not that good. At, you know, watch the first season, then uh, pick up it, pick it up in the manga, whether it be through scans or physical, but good luck with physical. There's just, like, very limited people selling their freezing. Either way, I would put freezing in the at your own risk category in the rambling brother collection it is very much up to you if you want to invest the time on a series that is on hiatus and shows no signs of ending anytime soon